Hello crafty friends, this is the Papered Chef here. In today's Brothers Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to create a stamping mask. You will be stamping your stamped image first onto paper. We're going to scan it in and instead of cutting out this paper, which you could do and which will be the same process, we're instead going to cut it out in mylar. Now after you cut out these stamped images in mylar, you have these fine detailed mylar embellishments that you can use as is, these are great, but I'm going to show you ways to use the reverse and to make a mask so that you can then cover over the paper leaving just the dragonfly exposed and it's going to be really really easy to color and you can make lots of projects in a snap that way. I, In fact I'm going to be showing you 16 projects I created using this stamp set. So let me stamp while I talk and tell you where I got the stamp set, what it's about, when it's going to be released etc. So I'm going to do some stamping. This is Dragonfly Garden. This weekend I attended an on-stage event. There were I believe 10,000, over 10,000 demonstrators there. It was a virtual event and we were we were able to pre-order this Dragonfly Garden stamp set as part of the 2021 mini catalog which will be released in January. So this month I'm sending out catalogs so let me know if you're interested and then you will get them in December, the, the mini catalog, and then you're gonna be able to start ordering in January. Now demonstrators, we are lucky, we can start ordering earlier than, than the customers. So next month the demonstrators will be ordering this. If not sooner, many of them already have it because we were able to order it as part of the, anyone who attended the event was already able to order this, this stamp set. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just stamping both dragonflies, they're really detailed, they're really beautiful and I did color them in other ways which I will address when I get to the reason I got to this point of wanting to make a mess for them because when you color them in other ways it's very very time consuming and I was trying to make a lot of projects my advice is stamp them far apart from each other like stamp them far apart because you'll see when I show you my mask how close together they were it makes it a little bit harder the colors end up mixing up but I'll get to all that because there's lots of tips and tricks so this is this is your stamp. It's just a beautiful stamped image that's going to be easily recognized because there's well-defined black lines on it. And it's going to be super easy to scan and cut. And I'm just going to show you the settings I use for Mylar when I, was, when I was trying this out. And in fact, I saved them on the machine. And then you can take notes. And then you can, I'll also have a link in the description as to the the settings I used and the mylar I used and all that good stuff. I'm busy crafting this weekend because of this event I'm attending and I thought why not do a special on stage edition of my tutorials because of all of my crafty friends who are not only stamping up demonstrators but who also happen to have this stamp set. And if you don't have this stamp set you can make a stamping mask and learn about my techniques with whichever stamp sets you may have. It really doesn't matter because whatever I'm teaching you applies to any stamp set. So I'm moving my machine. Hopefully you can see all that, all the settings. Now, the stylus was just under the machine. So let me lift up the machine. It just rolled away. Here it is, here it is. So you should use your stylus if you can. And you can even change the angle of this little, this little screen. I like changing the angle. Okay, so we turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. We're gonna select scan. We're going to directly cut these out, meaning we're going to cut these out in Mylar. This is Mylar. I'll link to my exact Mylar I got from Amazon. That's where I got it. I'll link to my exact one. Okay, I'm going to use direct cut. Okay, because I'm directly cutting them out. I'm going to save it to my machine. This is asking where you want to temporarily store the data. We're storing the data on the machine. I can use black and white recognition mode because I have good contrast between the foreground and the background on these stamped images. And I can also use the 12 by 6 area. I don't need to use a 12 by 12. You don't have this option in other models, but with the SDX models, you can you have the option of selecting a bigger area. But 12 by 6 is fine because that's the only size. I mean, I stamp my dragonflies up in the top half of the mat, so I only have to it doesn't take as much time to scan them in because it only needs to recognize the top 6 inches. Okay, so there they are. We're going to say okay. And the reason I used a nice big clean piece of whisper white cardstock was so that it would just be a nice clean scan. I don't have to worry about it, all the dirty parts of my mat. But if you want, if you do have a, 
a smaller piece of paper, you may want to frame your image, if, you know, just to get rid of all, any extra bits in the back. So that's about it. That's all you do. Now normally, let me just go ahead and preview and start to do the next step while I'm talking. Okay, normally I would just do an outline distance on these and I would cut these out with an outline distance. However, I'm just gonna take this off. Okay, let's, I don't want you to miss any steps. I'm taking this off the mat. I'm taking my stamped images off and I'm not cutting them with an outline distance. Let me show you, this is the reason I saved these. I'm cutting them directly. I don't want an outline distance. I want to be, no. I want to cut right along the line. When you make a stamping mask, it's it's the whole point of it is to cut right along the line. Exactly, okay? So you that's the point. I'm not putting an outline distance around my dragonflies. If Because number one, I have, a, I have a punch, which I'll show you, okay? Number two, I'm, not, I'm trying to color them later. And, and, and if I had an outline around them, that would defeat the whole purpose of coloring them. So bo bottom line is remove your, remove your white piece of paper. Put on, put in, or on, whatever, stick, stick the mylar onto your mat. This is mylar. Now you're gonna take your painter's tape, definitely tape it down. You do not want this to slip. The, the, it's harder to cut mylar than it is to cut paper. And it's very likely that your blade gets caught up and slips on this stuff. So I just tape it down with painter's tape. That's about it, okay? So, and remember, separate your dragonflies, make them a little farther apart. Now I'm using auto blade technology, so I don't need to worry about blade depth, but I do need to worry about pressure and speed. I will put the settings for CM models for cutting mylar in the description of this video as well. So that's it. So we're gonna just, the easy part is just gonna be to cut them. So we're going to, no outline distance again, just re I'm, I know I repeat myself a lot in my tutorials, but it's really important that you don't put an outline distance around these. You're cutting along the black line. So we say, okay, now that's where you would put an outline distance if you were cutting stamped images, but we are not gonna put one. So what we need to do now is we say, okay, again, and we can say cut. Now then we can get to our settings. We could have set the settings ahead of time, but when you go to cut, you'll see that the settings are right here. That you get, that's where you always get to your settings. So here they are written if you want to write them down, but I'm going to show you where I got to them. So I'll leave it paused so you can write this down. You need a cut speed of two and you need a cut pressure of four. So where did I come up with this? It's just experimentation because there's default values on your machine. The default values always have a black rectangle or square around them, I guess rectangle. And so the default would have been, see, we're going to go up to, should be higher. See, the default speed is five, okay? So remember two and four, we'll get back to that. I'm just gonna go back down the default pressure. I'm just gonna go up, see? I'm just scrolling to see the default pressure is probably, probably less, probably less. It was, yeah, it was auto. The default pressure was auto. Okay, so I know from, from experimentation, I lowered the speed a couple times and you want to lower it a lot when you're cutting through thick materials. Anytime you have thick materials, you lower your speed. Okay. Once again, your default value is five, so you're lowering it, making your speed slower when you're cutting through thick material like mylar. Otherwise, the blade can get all caught up when it's trying to cut through something thick. And the cut pressure, I just that was just experimentation. I went up to four, and I was going to keep going up, but this, this pressure is where I stopped, and it worked. For this particular dragonfly, now depending on the detail of your image, you may have to change your speed and pressure further, but that's all you need for now. So we're gonna say start, and I like to keep rolling my video, so I'm not, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these, and I'm gonna cut two out, and the reason I cut two out is because that way I can color two different dragonflies at once without having to worry about cleaning off my mylar. But the real great thing about using mylar for your stamping mask is that you can just wash it off with a baby wipe or wash it in the sink. It's very, very easy to reuse this material. Now, if you don't have mylar and you're watching this tutorial right now and you have any stamped image in your collection, you can use shrinky dink material. That's the acetate. You can use acetate from packaging material. You can use overhead transparency sheets if you're a hoarder and you have those from the 80s like I do from teaching. You, you can use, okay, it's trying to cut again, so let's address that. Okay, you can use other pieces of acetate, any type of thin plastic. Now we make, at Stampin' Up, you know, we make window sheets. They're not, they're not foggy like this. They're not, they're not fogged out and they're not as thick as the Smilar, 
but we do make at Stampin' Up! window sheets. So I will link to that and you can use window sheets to make a, a stamping mask as well. Now, why am I quitting the cutting when it's not done yet? Well, it is done. And what happened is it thought that it was so thick that it needed to cut through twice. You make sure if you get this, just don't do it twice. Just trust me, you don't need to cut it twice. It's already cut. So even it's trying to do a second pass because it, it thinks this material is so thick it needs to do a second pass. No, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna quit cutting. And then I'm gonna just say, okay. And I, I'm saying I don't need it. We're hoping that that's the case. I didn't need it earlier. And then we're gonna go ahead and unload the mat. And I'm gonna, I'm done with this. I'm just gonna unload and show you, just so you know, there's no shenanigans here that I don't, I didn't need a second pass. All right. Look at that. See, look at that clean cut. If you have a second pass, you're risking a couple things. And, and you know, I just know this from from experience. You, you're risking the fact that your mat could slip, your your blade might not cut in the same exact spot, you might get a jaggedy edge of something. There's no reason to cut twice if you don't need to cut twice. So that's exactly what we want. And then, like I said, you have these to save and use for beautiful embellishments. And then you have, you know, this is what we're gonna use right now. Okay, so the more times you're gonna cut, the more times we can go ahead and delete all patterns and get rid of the scan and cut. We're done with that. The more times you, you cut, the more times you risk jaggedy edges and problems. All right, so now let's get to the heart of the matter. What this is used for, and then at the end, of course, I always show you my projects. If you've watched my channel, I always show you many other applications of this, you know, this technique and practical example. So <laughs> you can see even one of my flying pigs. This is the flying pig from this little piggy stamp set. I was using the other piece of this my mylar. I think it comes in a pack of 12 sheets, so I definitely reuse, I use the sheets for a lot of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out four. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll get out my four sponges. Okay, these are sponge brayers available now at Stampin' Up, my four sponge brayers. I will get out my ink that goes with this suite. Okay, and we will go ahead and I don't know why I have that out. Let's see. I will show you the designer series paper and some other things that coordinate with the dandy garden. But let's first do this. We have three, four, five. We have five we can color. Okay. We have five we can color. And we are going to use, let's see if I have my other mask I made earlier. And if not, I just wipe off this one. But that's the beauty of it. We can get a baby wipe. I'll get a baby wipe ready and we'll be wiping it off. I wanted to show you the one I made earlier because I made it so close together. I cut it so close together. And it was, it was, it's probably drying by my, my sink. All right, so let's get to this. So we're going to, we're going to, let's do Misty Moonlight. So this is Misty Moonlight, one of the coordinating colors in the Dandy Garden Suite. Flip that open. And I have a brayer that's dedicated to Misty Moonlight. So let's make sure we can see, my crafty friends can see. I got my good lighting here. Here's our mask. We'll use the bigger piece of paper. We'll use that one. Now it doesn't matter if I put my mask, I can put it over the top of the stamped image, which makes it really convenient. Right, but then after that, my, my dragonflies are not, are not gonna be lined up that beautifully along my mask, but for now they are. And if you want to make sure, since you're like, oh, I'm coloring two at once and they're lined up perfectly, then you can just go ahead and you can add some tape to your mylar and to your paper, just to help it keep from slipping. Painter's tape is great, washi tape is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brayer and I'm gonna roll, rolling, rolling, rolling. And I'm gonna roll over my Misty Moonlight and I'm gonna, and sometimes you wanna roll on your mat if it's too dark, but in this case, I've already been using it and it wasn't too dark with the brayer and I'm just gonna color my dragonfly. Okay, and you can go, you know, you can go in one direction, back and forth, it doesn't matter. You just keep on doing it till it's as dark as you want. Okay. And it doesn't look like I did much, but you'll see in a minute. And then if, if you wanna make it real dark, just go back and forth like that. Okay, so that's good. Now we have a misty moonlight. Did I say butterfly? I think I mean dragonfly. I don't know. You know what I mean. Okay, this, so that was Misty Moonlight. Now we'll do some, we will do a bumblebee, a bumblebee dragonfly. 
Again, open up the ink. Again, Bubble Bee is one of the coordinating colors in the Dandy Garden. Look how much easier that one goes on. I think I need a re-inker for my Misty Moonlight. I do have a re-inker, actually. That's one of the ink colors. I usually don't buy re-inkers. Not until later when I start running out, but I'm going to get one. Get Put some more ink in that one. Okay? That one's pretty inked up, so that's the Bumblebee. Okay? Re you have a reusable mask. Now, earlier what I was telling you is I put these two close together, and then my, my colors started, when I was sponge coloring, my colors started mixing together when I, when I cut these out too close together. Look at those beauties. Look how easy they were to color, okay? We'll leave them, we'll leave them there for you to look at while I use this mask over again. So what I'm gonna do is take my baby wipe. This is a baby wipe and I'm just, actually, that got a lot of lint on it, didn't it? So we'll just get a wetter baby wipe. This baby wipe is too dry. I'm just using, what, the Mickey Mouse Huggies? <laughs> Why not? Okay, we'll get, we'll get rid of the ink on there. So there we go. And if you want to dry it a little bit, just wipe it on the mat to dry it. I guess the other side of the mask might work too if it's perfectly reversible. But definitely dry your mask again before you use it. So there we have, we'll just do the other colors. I especially want to show you the Calypso Coral. Okay, that was the Bumblebee. Here I have, I have Blackberry Bliss. Here I have a Calypso. We're going to do Calypso Coral because there's a reason I want to show you that. Because I can compare that to what I did with the blends. Okay, and let's use, we got, we'll get rid of these. So the, again, we have sponge brayers. They come with two handles and four sponges, our packs of sponge brayers. And I, I definitely use them all the time and I like to not have to wash them out a lot. So that's why I'm happy to, to have my, you know, my, my sponge brayers where I don't have to keep washing them. Okay, let's do this one. Let's, this one looks drier than that side. That side still looks a little wet. So we'll do this side. Okay, we've inked up our sponge brayer. And we're going to color. So it just it's just it's amazing how easy it is to color. Back and forth, back and forth. Usually I just do one direction. It spreads on evenly. And this is just perfect, this perfect mylar. Okay, that's perfect. And now we have... I'm not going to do Blackberry Bliss only because I don't have a Blackberry Bliss sponge brayer brayer set aside, but I do have a Mossy Meadow sponge brayer set aside. But Blackberry Bliss is another one of the coordinating colors in that suite. That's why I have all my ink out. I was doing some other stuff with these, and we'll do a Mossy Meadow, and we'll put that down there. And again, it should you should definitely let let it dry more. I could do this all day. In fact, I did do it all day and I've probably made about 50 of these so far and lots of projects to show you with these completed dragonflies. Okay, if it doesn't go all the way to the edge, just move your mask around a little. Like I was, I hadn't taped that one down, so it was kind of, but it kind of made a cool halo effect. Halo. Halo, hello. Awesome. Okay, so there are the four we just colored super fast. Now I want to show you, I told you I was going to show you some other techniques to use these masks for. So here are some other techniques to use it for. So let's take, uh, let's do an easier one. Let's use this big piece of paper first. I'll do this one. I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is now show you another way you'd use this. So one, I always like to teach you tips and tricks and techniques when, when you use your scan and cut. So one is obviously the best reason to have a mask is obviously to color your stamped image, right? That's one reason to have a mask. Another one, we could you could have made mylar embellishments, right? But let's show you another big reason to have them. So let's take the same sponge brayer, okay? And we're gonna ink up the ink. And now you can just not color your stamped image. Just you can put background elements onto your paper. How artistic is that? So now you use this as a stencil, okay? So that's your other way to use it is using it as a stencil. I try to go in one direction. If you don't, if you keep going back and forth, you get uneven spots. That's why it's better to roll in one direction and then roll in one direction. But that one got a little bit, it was a little bit uneven. But the darker it is, the better, you know, the darker the better. So look how cool that is and how artistic that is. So now you, and you can even cut that out after you're done. 
because you'll have a stamped image to cut out. Okay, so that's another way to use your mask. Of course, have your have your paper. I got a little close to the edge there. That's why it's best when you when you know, put to when you make your mask, when you make your stamping mask, make sure you do it like a little bit bigger border around them. Okay, so now let's do this one. This one was clips of coral. So now I want to show you one more thing you can do with this mask. Okay, so it's the thing I was doing the most of was coloring the stamped images. But this one is just fun to have artistic impressions along your paper. But now I want to show you one other thing. I'm going to put this down and I want to just tape it for a moment because here's a kind of a combination of both things you're going to use. You're going to use both things. You can use the brayer. Let, let me close my mossy meadow. And you can use just some stamping. So let's take out the clips of coral. And I want to show you something. There are these. I need to just get the stamp set for a minute. Talk about a buzz on Stampin' Up's page. Everyone kept asking, oh, what's this for? What's this for? Why is there only one side? Okay. So here's the stamp set. And an actual answer I heard from the company is that they couldn't fit both sides and it's just supposed to be art artistic. I don't know why this couldn't fit right here backwards, but far be it for me to question the design process because I know months and months go into the design process, but you have this little piece of artistic thing that you're supposed to put over the wings, but when you turn it upside down or backwards, okay, let me just, let me get a piece of paper. Let me, let me start with this. I have to just show you this, what I mean on here first. If you stamp it there and then you turn it around, it doesn't fit on, see, it doesn't fit on this perfectly. So everyone kept saying, oh no, oh no, it doesn't fit when you turn it around. And I'm kind of agreeing. I like things to be symmetrical. So th that's kind of what I th I came up with this then. I came up with, well, why not just fix the problem with the scan and cut? Because the scan and cut's all about fixing problems, right? It's all about that. So if you want the one side to show up, you just sort of do that. And you're not going to get it all in there because of the, you know, because of the mask. Because it, the mask is raised up, so it's not going to be totally flat. But then you get, you just do some in there. And then it's not really even still, but I did this kind of thing. I'll show you my final result later. So I did this kind of thing to get to get this blotchiness to go in both sides. And then I took my sponge brayer and did and colored in the whole thing. Isn't that cool? So now I have that whole artistic effect, but it doesn't look asymmetrical because I didn't go outside the lines because my mask is here, meaning my mask made, made it so it didn't look upside down, backwards, and all this weird stuff like it does when you do it like that. Although that's fine. If you were trying to use, this would be fine if you're trying to put like a dragonfly over there and you're trying to show a little shadow. And that's what we did at the, at the onstage event that we attended and that did look pretty cool when it's a background shadow. That is actually fine for that. But when you're trying to color in the wings, not so much it comes all out of the wings. And some people don't mind it coming out of the wings. But I'm just kind of like, I want it to stay in the wings. I don't know. Anyway. So that's that's another technique you can use the mask for. And voila. You have this. You have like this whole artistic effect, which is darker than this. And we can compare that to what I did with the blends in just a minute. Because I did, I did do some of these with the Calypso Coral blends as well. So the reason I came up with all this is because as I was trying to color with the Stampin' Blends. Let me move some of this out of the way. There were so many dark stampin' blends and they just they just didn't work right for my I mean the only ones that worked, let me show you, was my Calypso Coral worked for coloring in the dragonflies, but these this misty moonlight blends were just way too dark for me and that just didn't work for me when I was trying to color in the dragonflies. So I said let me just sponge color them, that would be better. So now I want to show you some project products from our Dandy Garden Suite before I show you my projects that I created. Okay, so let's just, first of all, when you're going to use this, I might have to trim a little off the bottom because the punch don't, doesn't go in there that far. So I have this punch, and we could have just used our scan and cut, of course, but I love having the dragonfly punch. It's called the dragonflies punch, plural. This is part of the Dandy Garden Suite. I love having it because it cuts out both big and small dragonflies and it does that outline distance and so does the scan and cut. The scan and cut, this is about an equivalent of a 0 0.04 outline distance. And I love having this punch, it's great, but you do have to make sure that you can get your punch in there, right? So that it fits in the bottom, you have to trim off a little paper. 
Okay, I like the small dragonfly, even though there's not a stamp to go with the small dragonfly. I like taking this punch and using up the scraps of my metallic cardstock. This is brushed metallic cardstock by Stampin' Up, available now as part of our holiday catalog that just landed on my shirt. And I was accenting, I was doing a lot of accents with these little copper dragonflies. Okay, so that's that. And then of course we have these and you could even cut out your artistic one. The artistic one that we just colored in. In fact, if you wanted to write someone's name or something, you probably wouldn't want all the busy lines. So maybe this is a better dragonfly style to have. Okay. And of course the other one. So anyway, you get the idea. The punch is awesome. Okay, it goes with the coordinates with the with the stamp set. And I'm going to let you look at that again before I show you my projects. Where did the stamp set go? I don't know how things disappear so quickly like right in my tutorials. Like I haven't gone anywhere. Oh, here it is. It's like I haven't left. I haven't gone anywhere. But all my stuff seems to go somewhere. Here we go. Here we go. That's what we're that's what we're looking at. There's no small ones to go with the small part of the punch. And this there's this designer series paper though. And I did have to trim a little bit off the bottom just to fit that punch in there. I have to open up the punch again. And it does cut out with the punch just perfectly, but it didn't have good luck with the scanning cut on this piece of paper. And I'm gonna show you why, or not show you why, but I'm gonna assume why. I did I did use the other sides for some accents. So beautiful to be able to cut out the punch. When I did try to cut out the designer series paper, here, it just didn't come out very well. It did come out perfect when I didn't put an outline distance. And that's that's when I didn't put an outline distance around this the this one here. So this is cutting without an outline distance and that came out pretty well. And it's weird because I'm using the same exact machine I'm using now. I added an outline distance and then for some reason it got all funky on me. I don't know why it just got offset and I know I was aligned because th I was perfectly aligned from that one. Maybe my mat slipped, I'm not sure. But I didn't have tr I had trouble with these very small ones because they just didn't cut out very well. They might look like they did, but I'm not very happy with that. That one's okay. But the tail got cut off. It was just it was just too much trouble. In other words, I'm happy with having big dragonflies and using the punch. I my punch did a better job in this case. Usually my scan and cut does a better job. Hey, I keep it real. I'll tell you which one does a better job. But in this case, my scan and cut only did a great job with having no outline distance. Right? But my punch did a better job when I had an outline distance. Okay, so the Dandy Garden Suite is what's called a mega suite. And in January, you're going to see loads and loads of products in this mega suite, and including another stamp set. In addition to one that goes, the Dragonfly Garden, I can't say the name of it yet. Well, number one, because I can't remember. But number two, I'm not supposed to slip about new products until they come out. But I'm allowed to show you things that I actually got in the mail. So this, because this came in the mail, I can show you this one. But there is a mega suite. And inside that mega suite, I was able to get some more things with that. I was able to get some, some ladybug trinkets. Okay, ladybug trinkets are part of that dandy garden. I love the ladybug trinkets. I put them on some of my projects. And you saw the designer series paper, but I'll go through it real quick. And I'm sure I'll probably do this again another time when the product comes out. But you're going to get to see what I made with this right now. So it's, it's important that I go over the products that I used to make all the projects I'm about to show you. So as you can see in the Dandy Garden designer series paper, there are lots of coordinating colors, including Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Misty Moonlight, that's behind there, Whisper White, Mossy Meadow, that's the greenish Mossy Meadow, and Calypso Coral. And you saw me use the clip so coral. Okay, so there's a lot of it's a it's a really really fun fun paper that is really nice. And then lastly, there is so I did show you one two three four. Lastly, there's some twine. I'm using my friend Ian's trick. He he says don't take the plastic off of your ribbon, <laughs> right? So it doesn't get all over the place. And I left my plastic on, but there's my braided linen trim. It's called Mossy Meadow Braided Linen Trim, and you can do that to it. All right, without further ado, let's show you the projects. A lot of times when you'll see my, 
my sentiments that I used for some of the first projects I'll show you, which are my tag treats. I did use these sentiments where I cut out circles, one and a quarter inch, I believe, or one and a half. I can't remember now. I'll try to write that down for you here. Actually, it'll show us right here. That's what this grid paper's for. The grid paper's for, here we go. It was one and a half is the outer circle. The inner circle is one and a quarter. Okay, so one and a quarter, you're a true friend, and one and a half. So those were the first ones I'm gonna show you. And out of the 16 projects I'm gonna show you, out of the 16, 12 of them used this technique of masking that I just got done using. And now this one I wanted to compare to this because we just cut out, we just cut out this Calypso Coral. So we have Calypso Coral, this is the masking technique and this is the little extra sponging. And then this is using the blends. So this one I used the blends for. But the rest I used, and maybe that one, but the rest I did use sponge coloring for. Oh, you can tell because I use sponge coloring on all the ones that have, I use the sponge coloring masking technique on all the ones that have this circle. All of these. So these five, let me just lay them down so you can see them. And then I'll show you what's in them, laying them down. So these five, I use the spongy technique. And I, like I said, I've already made like 50 of these, these dragonflies. And I'm putting Wink Stella on them and I'm, I'm sponging, sponging them real quick. I have a bunch cut out from paper and from, from stamping that you just saw me with the punching that I didn't add Wink Stella to yet. But look how many I have ready to go. Ready to go for projects. It makes it so easy. So this masking technique solves the problem of being of, of that stamp problem we had. It solves the problem of coloring outside the lines. It solves the problem of efficiency and time management. It just saves you lots of time. Okay, so here's one in Bumblebee. And these are my tag treats. I made these with the fancy tag topper punch and I put little Tic Tacs inside. I do have little Tic Tac kits and I do teach how to make these on my in my pap the paperchef.com page. That's my website. So we have little mini Tic Tacs and as you can see, different things I use for twine. I use bumblebee twine, misty moonlight twine, and the mossy meadow twine. Okay, this one's more Tic Tacs inside. I use bumblebee cardstock. I use blackberry bliss cardstock, mossy meadow cardstock, misty moonlight cardstock for my projects. This one I did use the little ladybug trinket and a banner punch at the end. Here's a technique right here, like I showed you. This for this technique of this of this dragonfly. See, I'm going to put it closer so you can see. I love how it came out because it's all in the lines. Because that's I like to have things in the lines. But that's just me. I like I'm not an abstract artsy crafter. I'm just not. But that's everybody has their style. There's no right or wrong way. But I got this little guy, which I love. I love the texture of this to stay in the lines using the mask. And then I so I so to make this effect is just what I just taught you. It was using the, a couple little splotches from here and then braring over it. And then you have this really cool texture. And then you add some Wink Stella. That's this little guy, the little glitter pen and bada boom. You have all kinds of texture and colors going on in different shades of mossy meadow. And it's just loads and loads of fun. Okay, so that's that. And what else do we have in here? I think I just showed all these to you. I, wanted, I did put something different in one of them that I'm trying to show you. Here, this one. This For this one, this tag treat, again, I use the fancy tag topper punch to make this. You can use your coordinating scraps of Dandy Garden Designer Series paper, and you can color, you can take one inch by three and a, half, three and a quarter inch pieces, and you can make little Hershey nuggets that coordinate with your little tag treats. Okay, so that's simple to do with the punch, and now I'm going to show you just some other things that I do with that punch as well. But I, did, I didn't want to show you like that you, you can make a lot of these at once. This is what they look like. You just make a lot of these. You, you can cut and score and punch ahead of time. Then you're ready to go. Then I did bookmarks ahead of time. I did lots of these, but I have one that's completed, one of, my, one of these completed projects to show you. So to make bookmarks, again, fancy tag topper punch. See, that's the fancy tag topper punch. It's two inches wide by 1.75 wide. And then you can make them as long as you want. I think that, that one's five and a half. So here is my finished bookmark using the masking technique of sponge coloring my little dragonfly and punching extra little ones out. This one in metallic. 
brushed metallic cardstock. And this is the misty moonlight and the mossy meadow twine. Okay, so that's my little tag, or you can use it as a bookmark or a tag. I just like to use it as sort of a product sample or just, you know, a gift for somebody. Okay, I have lots of cards to show you. I have this box. This was actually not the sponge coloring technique. This was the blends, but it's still nonetheless a dragonfly project. So I will show you the inside of my mini pizza box. And this kind of showcases every product in the Dandy Garden Suite, including the, tw the, braided, the braided twine, the little ladybug, the punch, the designer series paper. And this is our mini pizza box, which is available now. The mini pizza box can be decorated with designer series paper around the sides and front and on the inside. And it's just loads of fun to use. And there's your little dragonflies. Some nuggets and some Tic Tacs. Okay, here's another project. This is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the cards last. I have six cards to show you. This little project is a, just so you know where we're at on time, I have six more projects, wait, six? Seven, and counting this one. Seven more projects to show you. This one is Bumblebee, and some little twine, and it is a tea holder. You can actually use this for a Ghirardelli chocolate square, this little holder. I just I just used my little scoreboard to make this, my, trim, my paper trimmer and scoreboard, no machines needed. You just, and then I staple the back. I stapled it with a little mini stapler and I just covered up the staple marks with this little piece of design series paper, which you don't really even have to do, but that's just a little tea holder, a little gifty. And that actually can go inside the box as well. And it, it, you could also fit mini note cards in here because it's, a, it's about three and a half wide. So you can fit the little mini note cards that we have by stamping up that are three inches wide. All right, so let's show, I'm gonna see if any of these cards are the ones that didn't use the sponging. This one definitely used the sponging from the mask. So this one is, it was inspired by something we learned about during the on stage. They gave us some ideas about how our customers might not have a lot of different colors. So, you know, we're just using, instead of coloring in the background with blends and things, we're just showing that you can just use nice, you can take Bumblebee and just make nice backgrounds with it. That was the concept and, and just different ways to use your designer series paper. The event on stage was so inspirational and I got so many ideas. And so even though I took the projects they taught me and I changed them up to make them my own, I still really was inspired by them. Okay, so there's that. Oh, by the way, this is designer series paper and this is me sponging it with the Misty Moonlight. And of course, I always use Wink Stella on all the projects I'm about to show you. Okay, here's another one that was inspired by the onstage event this weekend. And just more designer series paper strips and a background and a little ladybug. They were using three ladybugs on many of the projects and I didn't want to use three ladybugs because I was afraid to run out of trinkets because we were limited to only get one pack of trinkets but now we can get more but before the event we we're only allowed one pack of ladybug trinkets and i wanted to make them last i don't know i'm a hoarder like that but that's the that's the mossy meadow dragonfly and nothing on the inside of that card here's a card i made prior to the event using i did use blends for this one but it's still the same concept gives you an idea of the design okay that's a that's a um, misty this is the one I accidentally mounted backwards. Yeah, no big deal. I'm gonna give it to someone who's left-handed. <laughs> anyway, that's a um, misty moonlight background and a little bit of bumblebee peeking out the side. Here's another one inspired by our on-stage event where it's tone-on-tone -tone stamping where you stamp the mossy meadow and then you stamp like right onto the mossy meadow background. And just those extra little pieces of designer series paper make all the difference in the world. I may have to do something with this suite, like a class, come the new year, because there's just so much you can do with this, so much you can do with this stamp set and these items. Another one inspired by the event. I had cut out all the pieces like they told me before the event. I just laid them out differently than the way they showed in the videos, but I did cut out the same size pieces. This is a piece of Smoky Slate, Blackberry Bliss, and there again, that sponge colored, using the masking from our scan and cut, that's the bumblebee. I even made one side darker than the other, not on purpose. But you can add, if you're gonna tie a ribbon around your card, then definitely pop up this layer with dimensionals so you don't get this big humpy thing going on with your layer. And then for some of these, I did stamp the insides. So for these two, I stamped the insides with just Mossy Meadow. That one I didn't stamp the inside of. And then here's my favorite card. I always like to show my favorite project last. My favorite project is a gatefold card. 
so it opens up. So I, I, and in order to shut it, you could use some kind of magnetic or Velcro enclosure, but I like to just use twine to close my gatefold cards. And there, take off the twine. I stamped in Bumblebee. This is a piece of designer series paper, a piece of brushed metallic, and the sponge colored dragonfly with a little die I used for the true friend. And with a gatefold, you can do so much more, but you can add so many more uh, things you can add. So I use some bumblebee in the inside and you can add designer series paper on your panels. Well, I hope you enjoyed this technique and I hope you will give it a try with, with Mylar and whichever, whichever stamp set you have. And if you want to make the butterfly, I mean the dragonfly white and color your whole background, you could adhere this piece of Mylar to your background, sponge color it, and then you could lift it off and you'd have a nice artistic white dragonfly on the background of whatever color you made it. So that's just one more, yet one more way to use the masking technique. That's all for now. This is the Papered Chef.